Hey, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave. Hope you're doing well. I am jumping on today to talk about something that came up in a recent meetup group meeting. We talked about all of the writing that goes on behind the scenes of your podcast and what is required and what's not, what's optional, what's mandatory. And uh, we had some interesting conversations on our meetup. If you're interested, we meet on a regular base up basis. We meet on a regular basis on meetup.com. You are more than welcome to come and join us. It is completely free. You don't have to pay a penny and come and meet with some of the most amazing podcasters in the world and share from a group environment where we all giving feedback and thoughts and ways of getting better. You will grow as a person, as a podcaster in community, get away from being alone in front of your mic and get in front of some other podcasters, grow with us, grow together on our meetup group. You are welcome to come. We would love to have you there. And it's really, it's really going to be better if you show up. So meetup.com, you can find the links to our meetup group over on howtopodcast.ca. Now, we are talking about writing for your podcast. We have blogs, show notes, episode titles, articles. You know what? Can I just, Dave, can I just be a podcaster? Do I have to write all of this stuff? Because it's adding to my workload. I have a job. I have children. I have responsibilities. I have a life. and I want to go and do stuff after I'm done recording my podcast. And everywhere I go, I'm told I got to do this next, next next thing and my simple 30 minute recording is now turning into hours of work and i'm not a writer dave i'm not a writer i'm a podcaster that's why i chose podcasting can't i just be a podcaster can people just leave me alone and let me podcast and the simple answer to that is yes you can just podcast and i don't mean that as just as meaning less than i mean it's okay to be a podcaster and simply podcast. Put your time and attention into your next episode being better than the last one to grow as a podcaster, to be a part of meetups, to do things that make you grow and become a stronger podcaster. Writing doesn't have to necessarily be part of that. And if you go to howtopodcast.ca, guess what you're not going to see? Blog posts about what I do. Because, and I don't have a uh, uh, re- written episode description and show notes and lengthy on and on diatribe of all of the things that I've said on my show. No, I don't. Because I have eight podcasts. And that's ridiculous to think that I can do eight times the amount of work to do all that. Now, am I getting the benefit of all of those things that I'm not doing? Uh, no, I'm not getting those benefits. I'm not getting found because of my words, but, but, let me just say, people are finding the show. Would they find the show easier if I had more posts in word format? Maybe, maybe, yeah, I would, I would really agree with that. I think that would make things better for my show, but it comes down to bandwidth. It comes down to how much you can do. So I really want to jump into this whole thing about all of the different things that we write in our podcast, okay, here on the show. And I want to encourage you that you can do whatever you can to the limit that you can do. And don't feel guilty if you don't do more than that. Don't let anybody put you in a corner and say, you're not a good podcaster if you don't do A, B, C, and D. E, F, G, H, I, J, all the way. Like, no, 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 no. Do what you can with, with the time that you have and do it well. That's the best way to grow your show. And everything else will come in the future as your podcast grows and as things change for you and as you do more of this, okay? So don't think you have to do all of the things. You have permission from me. And if anybody comes after you, send them to this episode and say, go listen to Dave. He told me I didn't have to do all that stuff, okay? All right. So let's talk about the basics of your podcast episode. You have A, you have the name of your podcast, which I'm pretty sure you've solidified by now. And if you're new, you want to make sure that the name of your podcast is something that's searchable. So again, I've talked about this on the show before. If I did the Dave podcast, 
What the heck is that about? Right? No one is going to Google and typing in, I'm looking for a podcast about Dave. No, nobody, nobody's doing that. No, really, no one cares that I have a Dave podcast. Now, if I have the how to podcast series, guess what people are typing into Google when they're thinking about starting a show? How to podcast. It's kind of right there in the name. And it works. I got to tell you, it works. People have searched how to podcast on Apple and found the show. People have seen it on Spotify and found the show. I've been found on Google for for that title. Uh, everywhere. YouTube. It's amazing. Having the right title for your show is the bare minimum that you want to do for your podcast. So if you have some interesting name for your show, then make sure you have an extension to the name. Just like a book will have a subtitle. They'll have the main title of the book and then a subtitle that kind of explains it more. You want to have good searchable words in the name of your podcast title that lead people to your show so that you can be found. That's the basics. Okay, so you definitely need to do that and do that well. Need help? How to podcast.ca. Let's bounce some names together. Let's see what we can come up with for your show. You want to be found by the name of your podcast. Very simple. That's where you start. The next step after that is you want to have good description for your podcast. And that is the information that will show up on Apple and Spotify and YouTube. That's that little blurb that says what this podcast is all about. And it can't be about you. It can't be about how long you've been a podcaster and all of the awards you've won about being a podcaster and how you created podcasting. None of that stuff. Nobody cares about that. They're here for, for what they're going to get from the content. So make sure you write your blurb about your show to be customer facing. In that, you want the listener to go, this is a podcast for me. And this is what I need and what I'm looking for. And this is the podcast that answers the questions about the things that I'm looking for. I really don't care who you are. Sorry, but I'm really here for what I'm looking for. So write your podcast blurb, not about you and all the great things you've done. I've got awards. I could brag about awards. All, yeah, but does it mean anything to you? No, it doesn't mean anything to you that I've won these awards. So ignore that. Focus on your listener, your ideal listener. And what is this show about? That's your podcast description. And then we get into the next level is the titles of your episodes. You have to write these. Now, you can use all kinds of tools to help you write good show titles for your episodes, but you want to make sure that you have the best use of your characters. You'll have people tell you never to put episode numbers in your title of your podcast episodes. Fine. I get why I do, because for me, it's easy for me to search. It's easy for me to keep track of my files on my computer and easy to send a listener to episode 173, where you'll find that I talked about A, B, and C. Really simple because you can see it right in the name of the episode title. Now, I know people don't agree with that. I understand why they don't agree with that. But for me, it works and it makes it simple for the listener. So I default to the listener in all things. And so that's why I have them in there. Do whatever works for you. Please don't let my thoughts on this, on episode titles, become your holy grail of podcast episode titles. You do what works for you. Test it. Test and see. See what you can do with your titles. But make sure what's in your title is appropriate. So what you won't see in my titles is episode one, how to podcast series, Dave Campbell, and then the title of what I'm talking about. Because that's going to be so buried at the end of the description of my episode that you're not even going to see it. Get that information as close to the front of your description in your title as possible. So get right into that. So look at mine today. It says episode 251, writing your writing for your podcast. So it's right there, it's right there in the title of the show that this is what we're talking about on the podcast. Get right to it. And then when you come on the mic, don't do five minutes of commercials. It's boring. Get in there and get right to the content right away because that puts phones in pockets. That's what you want. Phones in pockets for your podcast. That's the most important thing. So people will listen to the entire show. So you have your episode, you have your podcast name, 
You have your podcast description, and then we get down to your episode titles. And then we get into what we call, some people will call your show notes. Some people will call it your episode uh, descriptions. Um, that's the next level after the title of your episode. And that's the information that shows on your phone, on your device, while you're listening to the podcast. What are some of the key things in here? You're definitely going to want to have any links that you mention. So if you have an author on and they have a book or they have a website, they have a coaching program, whatever, you talk about it in the show. Do not frustrate your listener and make them go to Google and try to find that link. Just put it in the show notes. And for the, in, in the actual description that goes with the podcast on the phone, because it makes it super easy for your listener to follow up and go get the thing that you talked about. It's easy. And avoid doing shortened uh, website addresses where you, instead of going um, www. Right? You just have that. You actually have to have the entire um, address for the link, which would be what you see in the white bar across the top of the screen. You want all of that information as a clickable link in your podcast show notes which will display in most players. Not all, but most. That way your, your, your listening audience can actually just click the button and go right to the actual link. That's a great spot. So in that show notes part of your what's on your phone displayed with the playable episode is the information that is from, pertaining to the content of what we're talking about on that episode. That's important. Now, you can stop at that point. That's kind of the main things that you need. You need your podcast, pod, the name of your podcast. You need uh, a description for your podcast. You need your episodes that go out on a regular basis with some form of information about what you talked about. And that could be short, a few paragraphs with some links and a link to your own website, which would be great. That's it. You're done. That's all you need, really, as a podcaster, bare minimum, you're good. That's a great starting point. And you can do that for me. I have over uh, a thousand episodes now, and that's how I frame all of my podcasts, that kind of information. And what I don't have is a website, a location on my website where I have blog posts for every single episode, a more detailed long form written blog for my podcast. And you're like, well, well, Dave, why? Why aren't you writing blogs for every episode? For me, it comes down to where do I want to compete? Where do I want to compete for people's attention? Now, there's obviously benefits to having a blog post, which is more, again, long form content. But I want you to keep in mind, as of a recent Google search, just right now, before jumping on to record this episode, at the moment, according to Google, there are, <laughs> latest statistics, there are over 600 million blogs in the world. That's nearly a third of all 1.9 billion websites on the internet, and these uh, these blogs generate a whopping 7.5 million blog posts per day. That's over 2.7 billion pieces of content every year. 600 million blogs. Do you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 600 million blogs to try to get the attention of a listener of your podcast? Think about that for a second. That's a lot. Now, let's give you some context. As of podcastindex.org, which is a great tool for podcasters to look up podcasting stats, as of the same search time frame that I did for the blogs, I searched for podcasts and I asked how many podcasts are totally, like right now, active. And in the index right now, again, this is not active podcasts. This is just the total number of podcasts in the index. 4,161,393 podcasts in the index. And you're like, oh, that's a big number, Dave. There's no way my podcast is going to survive up against 4 million other podcasts. 
okay, wait, hold on, hold on. In the last 90 days, there's been 469,686 podcasts that are active. In the last 60 days, 424,818. In the last 30 days, 356,289. You see where we're going? In the last 10 days, 249,931 active podcasts. And in the last three days, are you ready for this? 119,903 actively posting podcast episodes of that 4 million. So when you see the 4 million number and you go, oh, there's no way that I can be found with 4 million podcasts. You're really only up against 119,903 active podcasts. And those aren't all in your area of expertise and what you're talking about. So it's even smaller once you get down to the community and what you talk about within your podcast. It's actually not as busy as you think. In comparison to 600 bil- million different blogs. Like, come on, 600 million? So for me, I find my greatest use of my time is to create podcast episodes. Jump on the mic, record an episode, post it, and then move on. Do some social media engagement, and that's it. So I haven't personally seen a return on investment for doing blog posts, long-form content, written long-form content for my podcast. And what's interesting is... I caught wind of something from another podcast. And, well, let's just say it caused this to happen. And now, it is time for Dave to share a most excellent rant on something that he just won't stop talking about. Please allow Dave to share his thoughts on this particular subject so that his glorious wife Jennifer may have a moment of rest from Dave going on and on and on about this topic. Here is Dave and his rant for this week. So I heard a podcast guru talk about the fact that they're show notes or your blog, whatever you want to call this, on their website. Every episode has a a written component to it that they post to their website. They're saying that people were finding their written content around the episode to be so powerful and so great that people stopped listening to the actual podcast. And they thought that was a badge of honor. That look how great I am as a writer that people are stop listening to my podcast. And they just read what I write. And I'm thinking, congratulations, you have a blog. Good job. (laughs) Uh, So for me, in my podcast, I'm defaulting back to the fact that podcasting for me, from day one, it's been audio experience. I'm going all in on the audio side. I know videos creeping in all around us in podcasting. But for me, an audio podcast is where I'm putting the soul attention for my show. And if you're a new podcaster and you're overwhelmed by all of the other things that people add to your list, if you want to have a podcast, you got to do all these other things. You can simply be a podcaster and it is okay to just do that. Okay. You have permission to not write for hours and hours and hours, creating this beautifully well-written document that talks about what you talked about on your podcast, you can simply be a podcaster. When you look back at the history of podcasting, a lot of podcasters originally started as bloggers. So it kind of makes sense that blogging and podcasting seem to go hand in hand. And a lot of the old school podcasters that'll get on and teach podcasting will tell you that a blog is necessary for a podcaster. Now, I, again, I completely understand why a podcast benefits from having a blog. I do. I really do. I think if time and availability and all of that was not an op- not a problem for me, that I would invest heavily into doing more of that. Because again, it gives Google and all the other search engines an opportunity to find my content for a non-audio in the non-audio space. With the written word, there's definitely benefits to that. 
And is it something I'd like to do in the future? Yes, 100%. So if you're thinking to this, Dave is just poo-pooing on all written content and thinking that blogs are terrible. I'm saying just don't swing so far to the other end where you stop podcasting and just become a blogger. Then you've kind of just, just destroyed the whole reason about having a podcast. Again, and I might be a little bit more leaning towards the audio side of podcasting away from blogging. And you can blame me for that. You can point me that for that. I, I get that. But for what I have time to do, I work full time and I podcast on my days off. So I want to get as much podcasting done and as good at podcasting as possible and help as many people as possible in podcasting. And when we throw on all these layers, email marketing, writing a blog, having great show notes, on and on and on, social media, website, interviews, be a guest. It just keeps growing and growing and growing to the point where I think some podcasters just give up. They're like, you know what? This is ridiculous. I just want to record my podcast and be done. And I'm just telling you again that that is possible. That is completely fine. And that you do not have to do all of the things that you don't have time to do and then get frustrated and feel like you're a terrible podcaster because you don't have an active blog. Those two things need to be separate. And if you can, if you have time to do this, great. That's awesome. You should do that and do it well. If you don't have time, you should never feel guilty for not having a blog for your podcast. Have good episode information for every episode. Again, that includes a general idea of what we talked about in the episode and any clickable links to content mentioned within the episode. That's it. A link to your guest a link to your own personal website. That's all you need. Really, that's all you need to be found because that is a searchable area within your, within the context of each episode, within the show notes, within the episode notes for each episode. Those are searchable words. So you want to make sure you use those and use them well. You can use AI to help you. You can take your transcription of your podcast. You can take the information from your notes and have an AI tool summarize it for you and give you really good search engine optimized terminology to, to help bring out the content you've done. But you're feeding these, these AI tools your own information and saying, take what I've written, summarize it back to me. Cool. That's great. Use those tools to help you. But when it comes to podcasting, I just want you to understand right from the beginning, all the way through this conversation, that you can be an audio podcaster. You can be a video podcaster, which one, whatever, whatever one you choose. And you can do what you have time to do and be done and be okay with that. It's fine. If you have time, if you have resources, if you have money to hire somebody, excellent. It's going to benefit you for sure. Then go for it. Awesome. But don't think it's the minimum requirement to being a podcaster that you have to have a blog for your podcast. You don't. I don't. And it works. Again, I pause and go, it could be better if I did have a blog, but I don't. And I don't feel guilty for not having one. So I would love to hear your thoughts around podcasting with blogs and leave me a message over at speakpipe on my website howtopodcast.ca tell me dave i have a blog well here's the name of my show first so we can promote your podcast let's do that here's the name of my podcast dave i do have a blog i do not have a blog i have an email newsletter i do not have an email newsletter what is your written content around each specific episode how much do you do how much do you not do? I would love to hear and get your feedback. This is meant to be a conversation, not Dave telling you what to do. I'm giving you permission to do what you have time to do and not feel guilty. Podcasting should be for everyone, not for people who only do it one way. And again, my way might not be your way. And that's the beauty of podcasting. 
Don't let anyone tell you that you're doing it wrong when you're doing your best. Podcasting is for everyone, including you, including me, and including those who disagree with us. Podcasting is for everyone, and everyone is welcome. Howtopodcast.ca. Go check out the episode notes for this episode. And if you go to my howtopodcast.ca website looking for today's blog, sorry, there's not going to be anything there as of now. Maybe in the future, maybe not. Thank you for listening to the podcast and take care. Get out there and podcast. Can't wait to hear your show. Hey, thanks for being here on the How to Podcast series. Glad to have you on the show with us, listening in. I hope you're finding value in the podcast. I hope you're finding something that helps you with your show, helps you with the tools and the information from these amazing guest co-hosts through our Daily Daves and these solo episodes. The variety of what we're doing here on the podcast is all designed for you so that you can get the tools you need to create your podcast and keep going with your show. That's why we're here. That's why I'm doing this. And I'm glad you're here finding value in this. If you would like to do a little bit more than just be a listener, if you want to do community with podcasters, we have a thing called our meetup on meetup.com. You can come find us and there'll be a link on our website at howtopodcast.ca and you can come and join in on our meetup. Instead of just being a, a listener, you could actually participate and come in and join other podcasters just like you at your stage, at your level, where you're right right now. And then other podcasters who are maybe a little further down the road who can learn from you and you can learn from them. And we host these meetups on a regular basis. Again, go to howtopodcast.ca and you'll find all the information there. We'd love for you to come join us at our next meetup. The only thing we need at our next meetup is you. You're the only thing missing from all of this. So consider joining our meetups. Again, they're totally free on a regular basis, all through howtopodcast.ca. And I'd love to hear more from you about your podcast as well. There's a SpeakPipe link on howtopodcast.ca. Leave a message. I'd love to hear about you and your show and how we can work together to get your message into the world. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And thank you for sharing the show with another podcaster that you're like, hey, I think you'd really like this episode. Go ahead, share the episode. Let's get more podcasters on the mic. Thanks for listening.